everyone. Welcome to the CAP and CLEAR Requirements for Clinical Research Laboratories course. I'm so delighted that you joined us today for this review. Now, this course is going to be an introduction of the CAP and CLEAR Requirements for Laboratories that perform routine and non-routine clinical samples for clinical trials. Now, we'll review the laboratory requirements for patient care and the requirements for clinical trials research. We'll look at the similarities and differences of CAP requirements from ISO 15189, medical laboratory requirements for quality and compliance. All those will be discussed. Now, if you move through the material, you have a question at any time. I'll do my best to answer during the session. Otherwise, I'll get an answer to you back with Barnett. I am Dr. Sheila Russell McCullers. I'm a very multifaceted scientific professional, and I have an absolute passion for quality. I've experienced working in different fields, including quality assurance, quality control, regulatory compliance, clinical research, and I've also conducted military research. Now, that was in a CAP accredited lab, and we had a focus on biological weapons. I've had a chance to audit, and I've had a chance to host audits, including uh, FDA, CLIA, and EMA for the European medicines. I've worked in private industries, and I've also worked in the Department of Defense and the National Institutes of Health, NIH, and I've, so I've been able to obtain experience in GLP, GMP, and GCP. So before we get started, I just want to tell you a quick story about why I'm so passionate about quality. I actually had identical twin girls, and they were born premature. They weighed about four pounds. And because they were premature, we had to give them a vaccine against the respiratory virus. And that respiratory virus was RSV. So we put them on the schedule to get the vaccine. And when they got the vaccine, I looked at the nurse, and she pulled up the vaccine and syringe. And all I could think about was the process that went through to make that vaccine. I thought about the research, the testing, the manufacturing, the human trials. And, and at that moment, I was hoping that every requirement had been met. I was hoping that every regulation had been followed, and especially that every inspection that was done for that vaccine was thorough. So when I look at my plans today, I'm reminded that quality is not just very important in my work. Quality is really, really important in my life, and it's actually a guiding light in my life. So that's why I'm passionate about quality. So if you could give me a green check if you are passionate about quality. Thank you so much. So we'll take a look at the learning object objectives. At the end of this course, you should be able to describe CAP and CLEAR goals for patient and safety and privacy. You should be able to describe the CAP and CLEAR requirements. You should be able to distinguish the similarities and differences of the laboratory requirements for CAP and the ISO 15189 accreditation program. And finally, you should be able to identify the approaches that are used to evaluate a laboratory's compliance for a CAP and CLIA. Now, these can be performed either as inspection, an audit, or a survey. Now, in section one, we'll provide an overview of CLIA, CAP, and ISO 15189, and the goals for patient safety and human sample test result reliability. What is CLIA? CLIA refers to the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments of 1988. The law was enacted to ensure the accuracy, reliability, and timeliness of test results performed by clinical laboratories. Now, note, prior to CLIA, federal regulations for clinical laboratory testing were performed in independent laboratories and hospitals. And CLIA came about because there were inaccurate results from PAP smears. And we know PAP smears are very important. And we don't want them to have a false negative or false positive. So the law extended the regulations for types of testing and based on the compliance or the complexity of tests. It's not concerned with the type of lab, it's concerned with the, if it's com the complexity of the test. Now, these could be performing similar tests. It could be in the hospital, or the doctor's office, or in another location. 
Now, to better understand the scope of CLIA, we want to ask what is meant by a laboratory. Now, a laboratory is a facility that examines material derived from the human body. Now, the purpose of that could be for diagnosis, it could be for prevention, treatment of any disease or impairment, it could be for the assessment of health of a human being. Now, it could also be to determine, to measure, for the presence or absence of a various substance. They could be, for example, looking to see if you have an antibody or an antigen, presence or absence of an antigen or antibody. Now, if a facility is just collecting specimens or preparing specimens or mailing the specimens and they're not performing testing, then they're not considered laboratories. 